Hello everyone, we're going to go on a new trip and this time we're going to go and see beautiful Alberta. So come along and have a nice time. Alberta is an interesting province. It's a part prairies or Great Plains and part Rocky Mountains. And if you go north, of course, you're up against the uh, Northwest Territory where the climate gets a lot harsher, so not conducive for a lot of agriculture. So whenever I hear that name Alberta, first thing that springs to mind is snow and cold. And uh, it can get cold early on in, in November when I mean cold, that means like minus 20 Celsius. I like this guy here too. He said, uh, I'm done with this. Of course, one of the consequences is uh, the accidents with a lot of blowing snow. But of course, we got that in Ontario too. And one of the reasons why Alberta has unusual weather is because of the rocky so if there's a strong wind from the west it can cause a chinook which would be a warm wind as it comes down off the mountains or if it's of course coming straight down from the arctic because there's nothing going to block the winds that's why you get that bitter cold now it's not just the winter that can be extreme in alberta you can get some pretty wild weather in the summer too and uh According to George, you can get snow any every or any month of the year. But look at these clouds, pretty wild formations. Now the other thing that Alberta is famous or infamous for is the tar sands, which been uh, fueling the Alberta economy and been providing plenty of income and a lot of jobs. It's not just at Tarzan's, but there's also uh, oil well drilling going on. And uh, I guess once you hate oil, and it's just a matter of pumping it out and collecting money along the way. This is a view looking over Calgary, and Calgary is on the Bow River. And when the oil prices were up, everybody happy in Calgary. And oil prices are down, everybody crying. But they always got the happenings of the Calgary stampede in the summertime. And uh, that'll uh, make up rain or shine, good times or bad times. You gotta have the stampede. One week of Great fun, I guess. Chuck wagon races. Looks like uh, great fun for the r for fellows running the wagon. Now this looks like going to end up not very good, not very happy ending there. Either the bull is going to get hurt or that rider is going to get hurt. This guy is in good form. Let her rip. Let's go. Well, yeah, they say that you should know people in high places if you want to get uh, school places. And well, there's my brother George with uh, Stella. And this is Wendy with uh, Mike and his girlfriend. And there's George fooling around. I think you can find a better stick to be waving around. And that's Moi, in front of this saddle home, and the city of Calgary in the background. So we decided we're going to go for a week up to George's timeshare up in Fairmont and uh, take some day trips from there. So we're going down the highway, Trans Canada, and there's several of these bridges. And the reason why they look a little 
funny is uh, they're actually for animals so they can cross the highway because then Trans Canada was uh, blocking their way so they decided to uh, build those bridges and as we were going down one of the side roads to a hiking trail there was this elk in the middle of the road and they, once you get out of the way he's just sticking a tongue out at us talking about having a nerve well, true to Whitmer fashion, you got to go for a hike. You can't just drive and do nothing. So we're going up the, uh, to come up to this little lake and uh, lovely color. And uh, there's Karen, Sydney, and George, all happy to be out in nature. And on the far side, there was some people scrambling, trying to get up that mountain. And I think she's struggling a bit there. I think people should find an easier way to get up. There's pathways to take. Interesting, too, how the spruce trees are tall and slender. And I guess there's something to do with there's so much snow there that the uh, long branches would just overload and snap off. That's looking back down on the Bull River. And there's a happy hikers because hey, we're going downhill now. It's a lot easier. Waterfalls on the Bull River. Kids are having a good time throwing rocks, looking down the Bull River Valley, and that actually ends up going into Calgary, feeding a reservoir while we're on the road again. Well, we reached the Continental Divide, which means that the water on the east side will flow east and on the West Lago, flow west. I think this is going to be a tight squeeze. I guess it's not a good road to be uh, driving at night and uh, not wide awake. Well, we arrived at Fairmont, where George and Wendy have a timeshare. And it's, uh, since we did all the hiking and traveling, good time to just sit back and relax and have a chat. Now the buildings are settled, set in a, in a golf course and uh, it's quite pretty there. There's also some hiking trails that lead out from the uh, golf course. Nice big waterfall. There's also hot springs there and there's actually a water coming down from one of the hot springs. On top where the hot springs are, there's also a spa with a swimming pool. And uh, we weren't really ready to go there. They also set up a nice teepee. And uh, not much for camping. Well, we also had visitors. This big well, Bear decided that he's going to come around and I think he was after the berry, so it was a berry bush at the corner there. That was a big old thing. So anyway, wouldn't want to argue with that fellow. Also, there was a lot of deer in that area. I guess with the wide open space with the golf course, mountain goat, Having a good snack. Well, one day, George says, let's go golfing, but we couldn't afford the fees or at the timeshare. So he said, oh, I know golf course is a lot cheaper. So we decided, here we go. Now look at me with that form. It's just too bad that Paul didn't get the message. Well, I know now why it was cheaper. That was a tough course. 
But uh, we had a good time. I don't know, George kind of whacked her down into the gully there, so I think he was struggling to get that ball back out. Of course, we had to just kind of snuck it in his pocket and faked it. Well, we're both struggling in the holler now. But we made it to the last hole. Uh, we're still uh, smiling. That's a good thing. Well, then we decided it was a good day to go down to Cranbrook, BC and check out Fort Steele. And uh, it was a, quite a nice place. The, uh, I guess, over 100 years old. I guess you can see who likes the little kitties there. Of course, we grew up with cats. Mom always had cats around the house. A cat. There's quite a nice landscape there, but you can see the mountains are not that high as they're in the central Rockies. Also, it was very dry at that time. You can see everything. A lot of it looks brown. I guess this was originally built as a military installation and now they're sort of converted into somewhat of an outdoor museum. Yeah, you see the garrison where the soldiers used to live in. Interesting too, they got the the boardwalks. I guess in the spring thought it was pretty muddy. There's no asphalt back then. That's quite an impressive building. I think it was hotel. Oh, I like this painless dentistry. I guess you get the guy drunk either and knock him over the head. <laughs> Won't feel no pain now. <laughs> This was a cute little schoolhouse. Classroom. All wooden desks. Chalkboard. Playground. Now there's fancy plastic slides, etc. There's your teeter totter kids. Go just play out there. And this was an unusual contraption. Apparently this was used by the gold mining industry. They uh, ran water through it and then they were filtering out the uh, gold in the, out of the water and the crud. But it's quite impressive. It's quite a, I like that fence for the garden. I don't think it would keep a buffalo out of there, but probably keeps the rabbits out. That's an old steamroller. I mean really steamroller. Well they're having a little powwow there. They we're kind of wondering whether they should just show up for us or just keep on munching away. Well George we we're back on the road again and George said let's go check this uh, hot springs out. So we're traveling down this gravel road and sure enough hidden away there in the valley was a little uh, hot spring no semi pools no servants just out in the woods well this got a little hairy there no railing nothing beautiful uh, landscape and there's a few cloud bursts just localized showers it's interesting to see it from this angle it seemed to kind of move along as well a bit of rain a bit of sunshine clouds just kind of floating along gently
We're back on to Trans-Canada Highway, and this section is referred to as the Okahala. It's kind of long and steep, relatively steep, and a lot of truckers bringing stuff from Calgary to uh, Vancouver are not too happy driving that stretch because uh, if your brakes fail, your SOL, especially with a big truck, this is a ski resort panorama that uh, in the summertime is rather quiet. A lot of uh, aspen trees in that particular area and the leaves kind of turn really golden in the fall. La clouds are flowing right across the tops of the trees. I guess there must be some inversion of the temperature that the humidity gets trapped further down in shape of clouds. Well, we're rolling along. And we made it to... Uh, Banff and a beautiful vista there across the lake and uh, this was before the pandemic so it was a uh, lot of Thai Chinese tourists and it was one busy place even the deer were just kind of walking along there they could care less they act, act like if they owned the place beautiful uh, entrance to it is where they, one of the lifts was starting to go up the mountain. I like the logs. Another picture of the lake. This time there's some canoes out there. Well, couldn't help but had to get our faces in there to put the mountains in the background. Alberta bound, Alberta bound. 
Well, if you haven't met George's other daughter, Michaela, well, Michaela has a heart of gold and nerve of steel. And when you see what she does for excitement, then you know what I mean. This is a Lake Placid. She's on a starting run of a skeleton ride. Come flying down face first on the track, up to 130 kilometers an hour. This is after the race with one of her raised teammates and a brave, brave young woman. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little journey and I hope that one day you are able to go to Alberta and enjoy the mountains and uh, praise and uh, might even have a chance to go to the stampede. Anyway, until next time, so long.